Welcome to Pleasant Green Sunday School. This is Lesson 10 for May the 6th, 2018. We begin a new unit today, Unit 3, entitled Give Praise to God. Our topic for today, taken from our adult quarterly, is Generous Giving. Generous Giving. Our devotional reading comes out of the uh, 112th Division of Psalm. Uh, background scripture uh, comes out of Exodus chapter 25 verses 1 through 7, Exodus chapter 35 verses 4 through 29, Leviticus chapter 27 verses 30 through 33, and 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verses 6 through 8. Our print passage um, where we will be studying today is taken from Exodus chapter 35 verses 20 through 29. And then uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 through 8. Our key verse reads, Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6 from the NIV translation. Our lesson aims today, number one, is to understand the account of Israel's offering to build and furnish the tabernacle. Uh, secondly, to appreciate the call to cheerful and generous giving to God. And then thirdly, to embrace cheerful and generous giving as a Christian way of life. And we're going to come back and talk about that uh, just a little bit in terms of our uh, giving as Christians. Uh, we have three outlines today from our lesson quarterly. The first outline is entitled Obedient Stewardship. Our second outline is entitled Obedient Leadership. And then our third out outline is entitled Grace Giving. We certainly thank and praise God for yet another opportunity to share our Sunday School lesson with you. We hope that you will grab your Bible and, and uh, something that you may be able to take some notes and some scripture reference as we talk about giving these two aspects of giving uh, that is taken from the Old Testament and the New Testament but I want to read a little bit of the biblical context for this lesson as we have uh, outlined in our quarterly Exodus chapter 35 and 2nd Corinthians chapter 9 focus on God's people giving generously in the Old Testament passage Moses called the people together as God had commanded and asked for material and personal contributions to assist in the construction work on the uh, tabernacle. You can see that in Exodus 35 verses 4 through 9. Everyone was given the opportunity to give but the prerequisite was that it be from uh, willing and committed hearts. The overwhelming response uh, of the people is detailed in Exodus chapter 35 verses 20 through 29. In the New Testament passage 2 Corinthians chapter 9 Paul was exhorting the Corinthians to follow through on their previous pledge to support of support for the needy members in the church of Jerusalem. Due to internal strife and rebellion against Paul's ministry the Corinthians had halted the effort to collect the ben a benevolent offering for those Jewish Christians. Now that their relationship with Paul had been restored, he wrote to encourage them to resume collecting their promised offering. He urged them to give generously, sacrificially, and from hearts stirred by the grace of God. Um, that's from 2 Corinthians chapter 8 verses 1 and 2 and it would be helpful uh, as you go back to the 8th chapter of the book of 2 Corinthians that you will read all of that uh, as it flows into uh, 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 9 uh, where we have a couple of verses from there. But we want to make sure we understand uh, these two aspects of giving. We're going to try to bring this out biblically because there's a lot of discussion about giving. There's a lot of uh, interpretation about giving from the Old and the New Testament. And so we want to be able to uh, share some scriptures with you today 
certainly those that we gave you from the uh, background scriptures uh, of this lesson so we can have a full scope of, of these passages uh, of scripture and, and how to use them how to use them we can use according to second uh, Corinth second Timothy I'm sorry chapter 3 I uh, believe verse 16 uh, through 18 we can use all of God's Word uh, but how we use that as uh, 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 the body of Christ is very important uh, in terms of uh, uh, our, our giving but in the Old Testament before we begin uh, in the book of Exodus uh, chapter 35 I, I just want to make mention of, of where we are in terms of the outline uh, of the book of Exodus so uh, Exodus chapters 25 through 40 all of these chapters deal with uh, the tabernacle and worship uh, and so we want to be able to connect all of these things together and also I want to make mention of what type of offering this is in the Old Testament uh, if you go back over to the book of Leviticus uh, uh, you'll find uh, various types of offerings uh, the book of Leviticus uh, sets forth uh, the nation of Israel in relationship with God so God had instituted uh, various statutes and commandments and ordinances uh, 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 in the na with the nation of Israel but in the book of Leviticus we see various types of of offerings and so I encourage you to go back and, and look at those different types of offering what God had commanded but in our lesson text today as we deal with giving this is a free will offering and we'll talk a little, a little bit more about that uh, as we go along but a free will offering is a gift given uh, at the impulse of the giver uh, the distinction mark uh, of the uh, free will offering was uh, the stirred hearts and willing spirits uh, of the giver uh, so the tabernacle uh, was constructed using materials given as free will offering so the people's desire to give was uh, so great that Moses was compelled to ask that no more gifts be given you can see that in Exodus chapter 36 verses 3 through 7 so uh, we find that recurring theme in the book of Exodus as well as in the book of uh, Second Corinthians uh, chapter 8 and chapter 9 about this uh, 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 motive of giving if you will a uh, free will uh, uh, given uh, 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 from stirred hearts and willing spirits that's very important in terms of giving uh, God doesn't need anything uh, uh, Psalm 24 says the earth is the Lord's uh, the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. Everything belongs to God. And so our giving, uh, and we don't talk about this uh, too much today. Uh, we do want people to give, but the motive of that giving is paramount uh, in the Old Testament. Uh, so let me just ask you a question before we get into these outlines. If the text in the Old Testament and the New Testament is talking about the willingness uh, of the giver, or the motive of giving, who would best be in a position to know what that motive is? Nobody but God. So, so we want to be able to, God was able to, even as First Samuel, uh, I believe chapter 16 helps us to understand that God doesn't look on the outer appearances uh, as we do, uh, even in giving how much we give, uh, and sometimes we broadcast what we give. God is concerned about the motive of that giving, what uh, what uh, the willingness uh, uh, represented from that individual giver. What distinction uh, can God draw uh, from our giving? Is something that we want to pay attention to as we look at this lesson. So we want to begin today in Exodus chapter 35. Uh, verses 20 through 26 and I think I want to read this from the NIV translation then the whole Israelite community withdrew from Moses presence and everyone who was willing and whose heart 
moved them came and brought an offering to the Lord for the work of the tent of meeting I want you to pin that if you're following me uh, because we're going to talk about that for the work uh, on the tent of meeting uh, for all its service I want you to pin that and for the sacred garments verse 22 all who were willing men and women alike came and brought gold jewelry of all kinds uh, brooches earrings um, rings and ornaments they all presented their gold as a wave offering uh, to the Lord everyone who had blue purple or scarlet yarn or fine linen or goat hair ram skins dyed red or other durable leather brought them those presenting an offering of silver or bronze brought it as an offering to the Lord and everyone who had acacia wood for uh, any part of the work brought it every skilled woman spun with her hands and brought uh, what had spun what she had spun blue purple or scarlet yarn um, or fine linen and all the women who were willing uh, and had the skill spun the goat hair so I want to make sure we understand here that this temple this tabernacle that is being constructed uh, is for the purpose of worship uh, and it as as we have our local churches today our churches are, are positioned uh, 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 for the purposes uh, or the work of ministry and I like this word that was brought out even in the NIV translation talking about this tent of meeting or this tabernacle for all its services so we have to understand that our giving supports the service or the ministry or the administration that every local congregation is tasked uh, 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 to to do uh, we we don't just uh, uh, meet uh, and, and, and just enjoy ourselves we are positioned in our communities uh, 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 and it should be understood by the communities at large we are there to serve and so it takes uh, our giving is to support uh, uh, and sustain the service by which God have called all of us to participate in so that we can better serve uh, the Lord uh, and, and the, 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 the temple uh, and the worship uh, uh, that, that we set out to do. But we are also uh, a position to service. Uh, that's very important. You and I have been uh, placed in the body uh, of Christ for Christian service. And as we read earlier uh, in our lesson aims that uh, it talked about em embrace cheerful and generous giving as a Christian way of life. So giving and the Christian life are inseparable. Uh, you might look at Romans chapter 12. And sometimes as I was studying this lesson, I was reminded that we have more to offer uh, in terms of our giving. We have more to offer than money. We have more to offer than material things. Uh, as members of the body of Christ, we have been anointed not only just to do material things or to benefit or to be a blessing in a material way we have spiritual contributions that we have to make uh, in terms of our Christian service so in this administration uh, 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 we have been given rank and position and placed in the body of Christ uh, uh, by the Holy Ghost to edify we have spiritual contributions to make as well as uh, uh, material uh, uh, blessings to add so but Moses issued a call for two kinds of contributions for the work involved in construction in constructing the tabernacle multiple kinds of materials and personal skills uh, and now in the body of Christ these would be gifts uh, uh, that would be needed to complete this task he had previously informed them that God wanted their participation uh, in constructing the tabernacle you see that in Exodus chapter 25 verse 18 
So perhaps as a test of their faith and their commitment to God, God instructed Moses to extend an invitation to all, but requested that only those who with uh, willing hearts should respond. Why do we do what we do? Do we give, rather it is uh, 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 materially or spiritually, do we give because we want to do it, because we love the Lord, because we are of a willing mind, or are we serving under compulsion? That's very important. We should not be giving in any capacity from a grudging spirit, from a, a, a spirit of coercion. Uh, uh, Sometimes we won't do anything unless somebody uh, 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 asks us multiple times or coerce us to doing them. And, and, and sometimes uh, that, that affects and it will affect the attitude of the service, whatever that may be. If we don't want to do a thing, then uh, uh, we do it in vain. Uh, and so God is looking at uh, the children of Israel here, and even through the commandments of Moses, God didn't pressure uh, the nation of Israel to participate in this. He, he could have, uh, uh, but he wanted to see. Uh, he wanted to to. Uh, get a glimpse of their commitment and their faithfulness to him. You know, uh, uh, one of the things that we see even in the New Testament, God sending his son for us to give his life uh, was brought about by love. It was, That was the motive for God so loved the world. So this should be the motive in terms of our giving. And this is what God was looking for uh, even with the nation of Israel, that they uh, do this from a spirit of willingness. So verse 21 affirmed the stipulation from the Lord that those giving would do so willingly and cheerfully. And also summarized the fact that they were uh, 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 doing so for the Lord's work. That's very important. We want to be able to further the administration uh, uh, of Jesus Christ to further the service uh, uh, sometimes we we are only as a, a local church able to reach so far but but as a goal we want to be able to go further uh, 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 as even as people of God we should be growing to do as much and or more as as we can uh, for uh, the service or in the administration of Jesus Christ. That is that that's what it's all about. So here uh the the nation of Israel the wealth and bounty they, that they had uh, acquired when they were leaving Egypt by the power of God. You all remember that in Exodus chapter 12 verse uh 35 and 36. Now they offered it back to him in appreciation for his divine favor toward them. So that's very important that we reflect upon uh, how good God is and, and has been to us uh, as a motive uh, uh, for our giving. Uh, 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 rather, it's spiritually, uh, it's a blessing to be able to serve. It's a blessing to be able to give. Uh, and we're not paying God for anything we, or we want to be able to as the nation of Israel. They were trying to construct a tabernacle and they needed resources uh, to be able to do that and so God wanted the people he could have miraculously uh, uh, just rained down a temple for them to worship in but this uh, uh, was an opportunity for the people to to be involved I, I like the word that was brought out in this lesson to cooperate uh, 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 in this Christian uh, act of service and that's what we are trying to do uh, even today and so this is the tone that God is setting with the nation of Israel so the question is asked in the quarterly why did God request that only those who were willing should give toward the construction of the tabernacle so this was in the Levitical code uh, as I said to you earlier uh, and so uh, which highlights Israel's relation to God but 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 who would want anything uh, uh, from an individual who did not want to give it? Uh, certainly God is uh, has feelings uh, uh, just like we do. Uh, and he gets offended uh, just like we do. 
and we have a tendency uh, sometimes to to make God feel that he is not uh, important and so we uh, uh, I hope that we're not thinking that we're helping God by anything that we do and so it, it just uh, 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 if you if you put yourself uh, in a position uh, as the question is asking us uh, if you are dealing with someone who does not want to do it then the best thing is you would not want that uh, whatever it is and so God is 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 that same uh, of that same type so God wants us to want to love him uh, uh, want to serve uh, be obedient because we want to be obedient and so this is what uh, uh, the lesson is probing us to uh, 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 to understand that this this offering is is a free choice uh, if you don't want to serve then don't participate in this endeavor and so uh, the nation of Israel uh, uh, were were put to uh, in a position where they could make a decision and so this is very important for us uh, uh, to understand that 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 our motive is always checked that our attitude is always checked uh, and so we need to forever be reminded that God is looking at not just what we did or how we did it but why did we do it that's very important the second outline is entitled obedient leadership this is taken from Exodus chapter 35 uh, verses 27 through 29 again from the NIV translations uh, the translation the leaders brought onyx stones and other gems to be mounted on the ephod and the breast piece uh, they also brought spices and, and olive oil uh, for the light and for the anointing oil and for the fragrant incense. All the Israelite uh, men and women who were willing brought to the Lord free will offerings for all the work the Lord through Moses had commanded them to do. So again in this outline we were talking about uh, uh, from the book of Exodus that the other uh, aspect of this giving was the contributions made for the uh, the holy garments that the high priest would wear. Uh, I don't know if you've ever seen a picture of that um, of uh, of an artist's impression of what the high priest would have worn, but it's very beautiful to see all of these various stones that represented the nation of Israel uh, that the high priest would wear this. Uh, uh, this ephod and, and, and these gems would be mounted uh, onto this uh, garment uh, and so uh, God wanted his priests to present themselves uh, in a way that would be pleasing to him just like he commanded and so the people contributed uh, uh, to this apparel uh, for the high priest that, that, uh, that this might be worn so, but the Lord's work is an inclusive responsibility on the part of the leadership and the people. God's call for offerings and service was accepted by both the people and the leaders among them. Each leader made a specific contribution of stones and gems for the priest's garments and spices uh, and uh, oil for lighting, anointing, and incense. And so again, uh, verse 29 emphasized the concept of willingness on the part of those who gave. Every believer should become personally involved in building the Lord's church as did these leaders to include giving. Effective leaders roll up their sleeves and join the people to fulfill the work required uh, to accomplish the mission of the church. That's very important and I want to raise this uh, uh, issue with you today as we talk about what is our role uh, 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 what is our mission as a church and that's very simple uh, uh, our mission is soul winning uh, and we are there as a local church to service to edify one another uh, 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 fellow believers but we are also there to serve the community uh, not just for material things uh, food pantry and clothing and utility assistance and the like but we are also there uh, to win that soul 
uh, 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 for Jesus Christ. This is how we expand the kingdom. This is nothing uh, short of the great commission that Jesus gave to his own disciples. And so this is, this is our job. And so our, our, our leaders, uh, and I like this, we, it's work. It is actual, literal work. Uh, and so uh, it takes resources, yes. But it also takes manpower to get things done. It takes people. Uh, to get things done. If you're going to have effective ministry, you need people. Uh, programs are fine in their place, but it takes people to, to, to organize and to facilitate these things so they work uh, and so that they function uh, uh, and that they function on a, on a consistent basis. So uh, the question is asked here, why should leaders demonstrate that they give generously to the work of their local church. So it is important that the local church have uh, faithful, obedient leadership as a pattern. So uh, this pattern that we're looking at uh, from the Old Testament, and the Old Testament is full of typology. We have patterns. We have fulfillments of types. Uh, uh, and so uh, Jesus fulfilled a type. Uh, uh, when we talk about all of this giving, uh, uh, if he had not given his life, you and I could not be saved. So he is the fulfillment of that Old Testament type. And so it's very important that we have a pattern as leaders for the people to be able to follow. So as we uh, 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 understand the word of God as leaders, then we ought to implement that so the people can see the pattern uh, and what that simply means is that the leaders has taken, have taken the gospel off of the pages and have, they have incorporated it into their lives so the people can see that this is what my understanding of the gospel looks like. This is how practic practical application is administered in the body of Christ. Uh, and, you know, uh, far too often, even in the uh, local church, in the body of Christ, there are a lot of people who do not know how to do, what to do, when to do, where to do. And so uh, they are relying, the people, uh, uh, the lay person is relying on our leadership to demonstrate, to mark, to show the way uh, for them. And this is the same thing that we do in terms of evangelism. We let our light so shine that men might see our good works and glorify the Father which is in heaven. So I hope that you understand, uh, even as a leader. And I know that you're probably saying, well, Reverend, I don't have a title. Well, you do. You are a witness. You are a credible witness. You have knowledge. Uh, and so your job even my job even as witnesses is to speak of those things that we have both seen and heard to testify uh, and so uh, and if we understand these principles then we should be able to demonstrate and to explain to a non-believer not just with our words but with our lifestyle on what it means to be in relationship with God as we see the type in the book of Leviticus from our background scripture. I hope you understand that. So let's shift a little bit now to grace giving. This is taken from Second uh, 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 Corinthians chapter nine, uh, verses six through eight, and again from the NIV translation. Paul says, "Remember this: whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously." Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Verse 8, and God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. So I hope that uh, at the outset we shared what the context uh, and I want to stress that the context of this passage of, of, of Scripture uh, is referencing, and as we said, 
I hope that you will go back to 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and start there. But uh, uh, this type, this passage here was addressing the, the church at Corinth and their ability to help uh, 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 these Jewish Christians who uh, were experiencing difficulty in Jerusalem. So this contribution was taken, uh, 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 raised if you will, uh, as an offering uh, to, and Paul sent representatives to get this offering and bring this offering to Jerusalem uh, 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 to help these Jewish Christians who were going through a difficult period. So how do we use this as the church? If now that we understand who this is addressed to, how can we as the church use this today? Very simple. Our giving is to be of a willing spirit uh, uh, and of a willing heart. Paul is specific about this. Uh, you should give, verse 7, uh, uh, even from the King James Version, every man according as he purposed in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth the cheerful giver. So, but I want to share some scripture with you uh, as we look a little bit further into this uh, agricultural metaphor uh, about sowing and reaping that Paul uses. So the farmer who plants much seed reaps a large crop, but a small planting yields a small harvest. This promise is also true in the spiritual realm. Those who give generously will reap abundantly for the kingdom. What is given is never lost it is sown so while God may at times provide a generous harvest in the physical and material realm to those who give this is not the New Testament promise or pattern Reverend what are you saying and we won't have time to get into all of this but I wanted to give you some scriptures that I wanted you to look at uh, as we talk about uh, uh, this giving and, 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 and how we are sowing and reaping. But I want you to look at uh, 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 8 verse 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 11 uh, verse 27. Uh, Luke chapter 6 verse 20. Verse 21. Verse 24. And verse 25. And then also James chapter 2 verse 5. One of the things that I, I found uh, uh, in, 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 in looking at uh, this, this application of this giving, there are also poor individuals um, in the household of faith. And it's important to understand that just because they are poor does not mean they are not blessed. Let me say that again. Just because you are a Christian and you are poor does not mean you are not blessed. And so if you, if you go back and you look at these scriptures that I gave you, you will see clearly what I'm sharing with you today. And as I shared with you just a moment ago, uh, that as we read about this sowing and reaping, uh, and to those who give, this is not the New Testament promise or pattern. These scriptures will support uh, my point. But Second Corinthians uh, chapter 8 and 9 record Paul's teaching and exhortation to the church at Corinth about giving, particularly to urge them to honor the previous pledge to support the needy Christians in Jerusalem. So beginning with verse 6, Paul outlined the rewards inherent in giving generously from the heart. He stated that generosity in giving is tied to uh, the principle that the size of the harvest is linked to the amount sown. Applied to giving, this principle says that the more uh, we give from the right motive, the more we can expect. Catch that. The more we give from the right motive, the more we can expect, primarily in reference to, the spiritual, to a spiritual harvest. Those who give cheerfully and generously will have no lack for material needs. A second 
motivation for giving generously is that God loves generosity. God's analysis uh, of the giver is not based on the size of the gift, but the giver's sincerity, not reluctantly, spontaneity, not under compulsion, and joyful willingness uh, as we talk about a cheerful giver. So generous givers can expect God to give to them. Um, God has the power. He is able to ensure uh, that our giving will be rewarded with the necessary amount of material blessings. Uh, uh, generous giving is a test of our faith and our love for God. So there's a lot to unpack here, but I hope that, that you will go back and read this lesson it's an entirety and see what the Lord will bless you to glean from it uh, in terms of our giving but I did see the parallel from the Old Testament uh, versus the New Testament in terms of our giving that the highlights uh, that come to me out of this lesson is our motive for giving our willingness to be able to do this uh, our love to do what we do not so much the amount if you gave a million dollars but your attitude was bad and you really didn't want to give the million dollars then what good is it and so it's very important uh, and, and sometimes people we don't talk about this a lot but uh, 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 you, you, you can see sometimes in people uh, their willingness to participate in something and sometimes they really don't want to do it. Uh, sometimes they have expressions, facial expressions, body language that they don't want to participate, uh, that they don't want to do a particular thing. So uh, we don't want to ever think that, that we are uh, uh, paying God off. Uh, and so we don't want to ever get it in our spirit that uh, we're going to give something and God owes us something. God owes you nothing. Uh, and scripture is clear about that and so uh, we don't want to try to get into a tit for tat with God we are doing what we are doing in terms of our giving because it is our duty to do if you read Romans chapter 12 uh, this is your reasonable service your your works are what should be done good works should follow a disciple uh, or a learner or a Christian uh, that is your way of life so uh, if you're doing what is customary and what is a way of life, then you do it from the right motive. And we're not always looking at God to pay us back. Uh, 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 we will never be able to count up the cost of everything that God has blessed us to do. So I just encourage you today uh, as you give whatever it is that God has blessed you to do, have the right spirit have the right motive in that giving. If you're singing in the choir, you're serving on the usher board, and you only have two nickels to give, pray about those two nickels and give those two nickels. And, and whatever your rank is in the body of Christ, serve in that capacity from a faithful standpoint. Uh, uh, and, 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 and love what you do and love why you do what you do. Love this work of ministry. Don't you know how difficult it was for Christ to give his life for something that he had not done and to pay a sin debt that was not attributed to him? Uh, uh, but he took it on his shoulders and he burdened and carried that thing that you and I might have this right to the tree of life. So, so uh, Philippians chapter 2 helps us to understand the humility of Christ. Uh, and that we should not do anything from selfish motives. We should always consider uh, uh, the other man, uh, uh, the other person, or uh, uh, the work that God has charged our hands. And, 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 and we need to learn as Christians how to be a blessing. And you can do that uh, on many different ways. Uh, and so, but God is concerned about our attitude and our willingness in the gift that we give. We hope, trust, and pray that you've understood something from this lesson today to help you and encourage you and that you would continue to do the things that God have placed upon you to do. 
but I want to read this closing prayer. Dear God, thank you for providing the pattern for giving generously and sacrificially by offering your son as a gift for our salvation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Again, so we hope, trust, and pray that you have uh, learned something today, been encouraged today. So until such time that the Lord will permit us to come together again, we say God bless you.